Welcome, this is Coincident, and you are watching It's Impossible to Beat the Icon of Sin Without Firing Any Weapons. Or is it? In the Doom speedrunning community, completing the game without harming demons is known as the pacifist category. A number of videos have been around showing how this challenge can be difficult, or sometimes outright impossible. This is definitely the case for the Icon of Sin, Doom 2's final boss, located at map 30. To win the game, you must kill me, John Romero, says the creepy voice in reverse. And if you look past this monstrous looking wall and see inside the brain, you will actually find the Icon of Sin itself, represented by Romero's head on a spike. Now, we could talk for hours about how creepy this design choice is and the fascinating story that led to this choice, but that's beside the point of this video. In this video, we want to know how can the Icon of Sin be beaten the pacifist way. The normal way is, of course, shooting rockets at the brain of the monstrous looking wall. The rockets go through the fake wall and explode, dealing area damage that kills the Icon of Sin. But for the pacifist challenge, shooting rockets is not an option. So what other option is there? Well, infighting, of course. This is a very common strategy for pacifist runs, just have the monsters kill each other. And they do kill each other. A lot. The problem here is that there is no line of fire to hit the Icon of Sin directly. That's why the rocket launcher is the weapon required to beat the game because it deals area damage, also known as splash damage, and it so happens that there are two monsters that also deal splash damage. Option 1. The Cyber Demon This colossal creature fires volleys of three rockets that deal splash damage just like Doomguy's rocket launcher. However, there are no Cyber Demons in Doom 2's Map 30. The Icon of Sin does spawn random monsters throughout the level, but it can never spawn a Cyber Demon, so this option does not work. Option 2. The Archfile The attack of the Archfile itself is complicated, to say the least. There are very interesting videos that explain the attack in detail, but the important aspect is that it deals a small area explosion damage around the target. So, if it happens that the target is close to the Icon of Sin, the splash damage can kill it. And the Icon of Sin can spawn archviles! That's it! Let's do it! Not so fast. There are several problems to this approach. Problem number one. The probability of an archvile spawning is less than 1%. People have played the entire map several times and beaten the game without ever seeing an archvile. Problem number two. The archvile attack deals a low amount of splash damage. For the target position that we discussed before, it might take more than 20 archvile explosions to kill the Icon of Sin. Problem number 3. The small gap inside the brain of this wall is not large enough for Doomguy or any other enemy to pass through and get in the target position. Seems impossible, doesn't it? And yet, it has been done. Not by human hand, but by a TAS, a tool-assisted speedrun. The run you are about to see was built and published by Zero Master on October the 8th, 2018. For 8 minutes straight, you can see the player moving around and shooting the air at exact moments, just before the archviles spawn. Shooting the weapon like this is called RNG manipulation. The Doom engine has only one random number table for everything, and firing the weapons makes use of this table. It is possible to do it in such a way to guarantee that the next monster spawned is an archvile. This strategy effectively solves problem number one. The process is repeated for eight minutes, after which there are about 30 archviles at the top platform. This, in turn, solves problem number two. As for problem number three, well, let's just see what happens next.
30 arch vials just blasted the icon of sin by attacking Doomguy's corpse at the target position that we discussed. Note that the Doomguy is too tall to fit inside the gap. This was problem number 3, but this problem was solved with one simple variable. The Doomguy is dead. He sacrificed himself to save the world. And when Doomguy dies, his height is reduced to zero. So Doomguy's corpse fits through the gap as the first archvile explosions kill him, and then the rest of the archviles continue to attack the corpse and kill the Icon of Sin. This strategy is impossible to perform by a human hand, especially because it is impossible for a human to manipulate RNG to get so many archviles to spawn. I honestly believe we'll never see a human completing Doom 2's Map 30 pacifist. Unless, of course, someone makes a new, groundbreaking discovery about the game. Considering that Doom is now 27 years old, I find that to be extremely unlikely. But the story does not end here. What if I told you that recently, in 2020? The Icon of Sin was defeated pacifist by a human hand. Would you believe it? Welcome to Plutonia, Final Doom's 32 map pack expansion released in 96, infamous for being extremely difficult. Plutonia's map 30 also contains an Icon of Sin, but of course the map itself is more complex and more difficult. The player needs to fight against Chain Gunners, Archviles, Mancubi, and the Cyber Demon before even getting close to the Icon of Sin. Then, the same strategy applies. Shoot rockets at the brain, and you win. Doing this the pacifist way, however, is not so simple. Especially due to all the monsters surrounding the area, which you cannot kill. Anyway, let's look at our options here. Manipulating RNG to spawn 30 archviles is not something that is doable by hand, as we've seen before. The other option is using the Cyberdemon, which is conveniently standing just in front of the Icon of Sin. But how can we force the Cyberdemon to shoot the Icon of Sin? Well, the run you are about to see was achieved by Playmo on May the 17th, 2020. Playmo starts by performing a difficult archvile jump. Here's what it looks like from the point of view of the Cyberdemon. Then, Playmo waits for a certain monster to spawn and move closer. Looking on the sides of this platform is a way to provoke the Cyberdemon to fire. These lost souls are not yet part of the plan. In fact, if the lost souls follow the player through the sides and behind this wall, it can mean the end of this run. Those lost souls must not pass. Thankfully, the Cyberdemon destroys them. Note that using the rockets of the Cyberdemon alone is not enough. The rockets are being fired too low to hit the Icon of Sin. After waiting a few more moments for monsters to spawn, Playmo notices that a pain elemental is finally getting close. He moves to the side to get the Cyberdemon to shoot, and maybe start some infighting. As Playmo looks on the other side of the platform, he can see the plan starting to come into place. The pain elemental is shooting lost souls at the Cyberdemon. But this does not seem to work. The Cyberdemon eventually kills the Pain Elemental. However, some of the Lost Souls seem to keep attacking the Cyberdemon. Playmo quickly moves back behind the Icon of Sin. And slowly but surely, the Lost Souls move towards his position and approach the Icon of Sin itself. But the Cyberdemon has lost interest in attacking the Lost Souls. After waiting for another Pain Elemental to spawn, Playmo gets his second chance. He provokes the Cyberdemon to attack, and quickly moves to the other side to influence the monster's pathfinding. After several minutes of moving behind the curtains, 
This happens. Finally, after several days of grinding, Playmo achieved the once thought to be impossible task of defeating the Icon of Sin, Pacifist. But what exactly happened? Why would the Cyber Demon ever shoot rockets at the Icon of Sin? Let's take a look at the strategy in detail. The plan obviously involved monster infighting between the Cyber Demon and the Pain Elemental. Infighting begins with rockets aimed at Doomguy that instead hurt the Pain Elemental. Then, the Pain Elemental fires a lost soul at the Cyber Demon. In normal circumstances, this would make the Cyber Demon shoot and kill whoever attacks it. But the Pain Elemental shoots lost souls, which are not normal projectiles. The lost soul is the living target itself, so the Cyber Demon targets the lost soul directly. But that's not enough, because the lost soul is not aligned with the Icon of Sin. For that to happen, it must move slightly to the right. And that's exactly why, at this very moment, you see Playmo running to the other side of the platform, to influence monster movements and make the lost soul move to the right, and have a chance of being aligned with the Icon of Sin. Now, the Cyber Demon always fires volleys of three rockets. The first rocket kills the lost soul, and the Cyber Demon fires two more rockets at the corpse of the lost soul which happens to not be affected by gravity. The two rockets fly into the brain of the Icon of Sin, and victory is achieved. Persistence and dedication are the words that I would describe as being absolutely necessary to achieve this. You know why? Because it took Playmo 829 attempts to get this result. Many attempts ended by the Cyberdemon rockets. Many attempts ended by the fire of other monsters. Many attempts ended by failed archfile jumps. Many attempts ended by the cyber demon dying to infighting. Many attempts ended by lost souls passing through the sides of the platform. Many attempts ended by falling into this hole of which there is no exit. And make no mistake, the recipe of having the Pain Elemental attack the Cyber Demon and the Lost Soul moving to the exact aligned position at the precise moment that the Cyber Demon decides to fire is an event that happened three times in 829 attempts. In other words, 0.36% of the time. Hold on a minute. Three times? What happened to the other two times? Well, let's take a look at Playmo's attempt number 179. The lost soul moved into place, the cyber demon fired, one rocket goes in, and another lost soul gets in the way, blocking the second rocket. We can also take a look at Playmo's attempt number 539. The lost soul moved into place, the cyber demon fired, and, randomly, the two rockets deal 248 damage to the Icon of Sin, which has a total health of 250. It is truly amazing how challenges like this are still being achieved to this day, 27 years after Doom was released. My sincere congratulations to Playmo for having the persistence and dedication to complete a challenge that everyone else thought was impossible and, against great odds, suffer failures that would make others give up, only to achieve victory after over 30 hours of work. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to press the like button. There are links in the description to the videos and channels of both Zero Master and Playmo. Make sure to visit or subscribe to them if you're interested in following their crazy achievements. That's all, folks. See you later.